Okay. All right. So, um, yeah, so let's go ahead and talk about the databases now. So let me go back. I sort of confused myself there for a moment. Um, so the databases we're going to talk about today are, are recently acquired African-American Black Studies primary resource databases. The way you get to them is you go to choose a database here from the front screen. And as you go, there's a lot of categories here. We have about 300 databases that we subscribe to, and they're broken down by the various disciplines that they fall in. Um, and so under ethnic studies is where we want to be today. Now, if I click just on ethnic studies, I'm going to get like two dozen databases. There's a lot of content that we subscribed to recently, plus some older ones that we've had for a while. So if I'm interested in African-American studies, I'm probably going to want to go a step back and look at these list of groups that I can take a look at, which is um, we have Asian-American studies, Black studies, Chicanx and Latinx studies, then uh, Native American Indigenous Studies. So if I go to the Black African American Studies link, you'll see these are the databases that we subscribe to for um, that area. Now, just off the right off the bat, these are basically in alphabetical order. The one that's not is this one, just because we didn't want that at the top because it kind of would throw people off if you're dealing with drama. You're going to go, wait, wait, I don't want drama. So we kind of Put that down a little bit lower, but the rest of the stuff is just in alphabetical order because we don't know what your needs are, right? You might need a newspaper, you might need other kind of documentary evidence for your particular project. So these are in no ranked order necessarily. So the first database that is listed is Black Life in America, and that's all about newspapers, right? Um, so there's thousands of newspapers where that content is pulled from and put into this database. About 400 of them are um, from, they're black owned. Um, and it's about the last over 300 years of, of, of history that's covered in these newspapers. Now, the cool thing is if you're here today and you're looking at African-American studies, but you also have interest in other ethnic groups, the platforms that I show you today will translate into these other um, uh, studies, right? So like Black Life in America, we have Hispanic Life in America, and we're probably going to get Asian Life in America soon. Um, actually, let me let some folks in. So, you know, if you can use one of these databases, you can use the others that are the sort of sister databases within those platforms. Now, what's a platform? I keep saying platform, I'm saying databases. What does all that mean? Well, it's kind of like your streaming services. All right. You might have Netflix, you might have Hulu, you might have Prime, you may have Disney Plus. They all have different content on them, right? They have different shows, they have different movies. Well, that's true of these databases we're here. They have different content. So if I search Black Life in America, it's going to be different content than Black Thought and Culture because they're different providers. They have different uh, content that they've decided to put into these databases. Um, and when I go into one of these databases like Black Life in America, let's click on it. You can see up here, the provider of it is NewsBank. NewsBank is the platform, kind of like if it was like Netflix, right? It's a platform. It's, it's got a, a particular, when you go there, you know, it doesn't matter what movie you're looking at, you know, sort of the same way to get to it. You can save in the same manner. Well, that's sort of how our, our platforms work. So using that analogy that our platforms are like a, a, a streaming service. So in this case, though, we're in Black Life in America, so we're only searching that content. We're not in Hispanic Life in America, which is a totally different data set with a totally different set of content. Okay. All right. Hopefully that made sense. Um, so Black Life in America, we talked about it's, it's newspapers. That's it. So if you want to find memoirs, letters, and speeches, and things like that, this is not the place you want to be. This is solely newspaper content. So let me go back one step. So when you're at this page, you're going to make sure you want to look at these um, descriptions of the databases before you go into them so you know what you're dealing with. If you need newspapers, then Black Life in America is great. If you don't want newspapers, or you're looking at some other content, perhaps you need to try one of these other databases because Black Life in America is solely newspaper content. Okay, so you have a couple of options when you get into this particular database um, or collection. Um, you can start searching right off the bat if you have an idea of what you want to search on. But they also have these really um, interesting breakdowns of um, eras that you can look at. So let's say you're, you're trying to figure out what topic you want to work with, but you're really interested in sort of the Jim Crow era. You can click on that category 
and start to drill down a little bit into these other subcategories. So you have this era here, and then these are some categories of, of information that might be interesting to you. So you say, well, I'm kind of interested in religion. You can go ahead and click on that. And then they have sort of these subcategories here where they will actually get you to the, um, the article content. So let's say you're interested in the idea of racial segregation in churches. We can go ahead and click on that and it will run the search. So I haven't put any information in like uh, what I want to search on. These are sort of canned searches that um, the database providers have put together based upon interest. So I get this uh, results set here and I have almost 400 articles that, um, that deal with this idea of segregated churches. So you'll see things like, you know, colored churches here. Um, this seems to be the, the, the terminology they're using. Now, here's the thing. This is a major issue when you have primary resource databases. You have to search. Right now, we just drill down to this topic, but you're seeing these terminology like colored churches. You might say Negro churches and what have you. These are newspapers, like in this case, from 1917. They don't use the same terminology we use today, and we are actually searching the full text of these articles. So we have to use the terminology that was used at the time. So they didn't use African-American. If you put that in there, you're really not going to get much results, if any. You have to use the terminology of the time. So back then, they would have said colored, Negro, Black, um, and these types of terms. So sometimes we don't like these terms. These are some outdated terms. Sometimes they're offensive, depending on which database you're in and what, what terms you have to use. But just keep in mind that we have to think like the people at the time. So what terms they would have been using because that's the terminology that's going to be in the articles. And otherwise, we're not going to get any results or not, the, not necessarily the results that we expect to get. So you can kind of see up here when we, we just drill down on the, on the actual uh, subjects that they gave us. But this is the search that they ended up running. You have this really long search here with these ors in between, which we'll talk about a little bit later. That's called Boolean searching. So they look for white churches, colored churches, um, black churches. And so that's an African church. That's what they ran on in order to get these 365 um, to come up within this date range. Okay. So let's talk about this. Let's talk about doing our own search. So let me go back to um, the beginning of the front page of the, uh, and so we're not going to look at this. We looked at that. That's like kind of drilling down into these pre-canned subject headings that they've uh, created for us. Let's say we want to do our own search here. So let's say we want to do something on black boxers from around the late 19th century to um, the early 20th century. So I might do a search like this. Go ahead and oh, I got somebody in the waiting room. Admit them. OK, um, so let's go ahead and do the search on black boxers. And I get a lot of results, almost 400,000. So when I put black and boxers in there, it's just looking for those two terms anywhere in an article and sometimes anywhere on a whole page of a newspaper. So that's one of the limitations of these databases. Sometimes they, the, 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 the content they're searching is, is broad. So like an entire page of a newspaper. So black might be in one article and, and boxer in another. Um, and it, so it doesn't know this context. So our idea is we want something on black boxers. And the computer reads it as bring up articles that have black and boxers in it. They may be completely dissociated. But um, so if we click on, um, you know, an article like this one here, you can see there it says black and it's talking about wearing black. It's not about black people and, and somewhere else. And then now you're talking about, you know, black congressmen and so forth. So you got a lot of stuff coming up and it's not has nothing to do with black boxers. So one thing we wanted to do, first of all, which I failed to do, was to change this to the change we want. Right? We said we wanted something from sort of the late 19th century to um, the early 20th century. So let's go 1890 to 1919 and go ahead and change our dates there. That way we'll get fewer results. So we had almost 400,000. We still almost have nearly 30,000. That's a lot. We don't want to deal with all that. But you can see here um, as well, our, our, um, our, our, term black in this case seems to be out of context. Again, it doesn't seem to be dealing with um, black people. It seems to be using the color black in some other context. So how do we get around this that we keep having, we want these articles to come up with that about black boxers, 
but they're disassociated. The terms are disassociated when we uh, run the search. And for some reason, this article never popped up, but I'm just going to ignore that for now and jump back here. Oh, and I was about to, and then I, I, got, I have to be patient. Um, what we need to do now, pay attention, please, for this part of the presentation. I know I'm going to cover a lot of stuff, and at some point, everybody's going to zone out. This is very important for this particular database because it's almost unusable without doing this. What these databases allow us to do is make these terms be a little more in context with one another by using what we call proximity searching. What proximity searching means is that I want my two words to appear near each other within a certain range. So if we say near three between these two terms, it means that black and boxers have to be within three words of each other so that we can't get that separation where black is in one article, boxers is in another, or it's a totally different part of the article and they have nothing to do with what we're looking for. So this means that black and boxers in any order, so it could be bo boxers that are black or black blah, 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 um, boxers, um, as long as it's within three words of one another, it will bring it up, okay? So let's run that search now. So we had almost 28,000, now we're down on 185. That's a much more um, usable, uh, search result number one, so we don't have 28,000, but now our terms are gonna be near each other. So now if I click on this Atlanta Journal article, you will notice, hopefully it pops up this time. Last time was a little slow, but I'm gonna be patient because I want you to see it. And I've noticed this, these are large images and sometimes they do take a minute to, um, to load. Um, sometimes they're faster, they come right up, sometimes they take a second. So we just kind of have to be patient. If I hit reload, it just kind of restarts the whole um, process over. So I'm just kind of wait a second, and hopefully it'll pop up. There it is. So now we'll see, and there it is, our term black and boxers near each other. That's what we wanted, right? Um, you go down a little bit further, you see boxers, black boxers again. Um, so that's what we were looking for. We were looking for the black and boxers together, not just those two terms anywhere in an article. And notice, as I said before, um, that this is looking at the entire page of this newspaper. You see, it's not looking at even one particular article. It's looking at this whole page. So that's if you don't use those proximity um, terms, you might have black in this article, boxers in this article, and you're like, why is this coming up? Why am I getting 400,000 results and none of them have anything to do with what I'm looking for? And it's an unfortunate thing about this particular database uh, that, or this suite of databases because Hispanic Life in America does the same thing, is yet you have, you're almost forced to use these proximity searches in order to get the results you want. So like I said, um, if you zone out, Please don't zone out now because this is this is very important in order to be able to use this database effectively. Okay, so there's another thing we could do here as well. We saw that in when we were looking at the uh, segregated churches that they were using color during this time period too, from like 1917. We can do what they were kind of doing with those ors. We call boolean searching. We can put in a, um, a parentheses and put or negro or colored. And now we can search on these different terms that would have been used for black people back in that time frame, but we still have it near boxers. So now we can find black boxers, Negro boxers, color boxers. So we have 185. This should give us more results because we're giving the computer more options, basically synonyms um, for that particular ethnic uh, distinction. So we've almost got uh, hundred, uh, 10 times as many results. We had 185, now we have 1780. So it's very effective. And you see right off the bat, it says Negro boxers right here in the first article. So when we had it at black boxers, that one didn't come up. So um, you, do get, you do get more, there's Negro boxers again. So you do get more results. So if you ever have these, these sort of ethnic groups where like when you're in the other database, Hispanic life in America, you can use Hispanic or Latino, you might try doing this parentheses, you put your common terms or your synonyms in parentheses and put or between the particular um, synonyms, and that will give the computer more options to bring back different terms. Now, if I also wanted other ethnic groups as well, you could do that too. They don't have to be synonyms. You could do like black or Hispanic near boxers, and you'll get both the ones that have black um, boxers and Hispanic boxers popping up. So, that's what I'm saying. This is this is this is the way that you have to use this database effectively. First of all, using the proximity searching, 
but then also possibly using um, some sort of Boolean searching in order to get variations on a group. Otherwise, you'd have to do the search on black boxers, get all your results, do it on Negro boxers, get all your results, do it on colored boxers, do all your results. That's annoying. It gets old and it takes a lot of time. You can do it all in one shot by doing it this way. Okay. Um, now, if you ever want to narrow down, the easiest way to narrow down is just to add um, terms. So like champion. So I don't want to deal with, you know, championship or something. Then you could do that and I should get a fewer results now. So I have 1700. Now I've, I've dropped out 700 by adding an extra term. So if you ever want to narrow, you're getting too many results, sometimes be more specific in your, in your terminology. And that way you will get um, fewer results. Sometimes I mean, still thousands, a lot to go through, but it's still fewer than 1700. Okay. Now, how do you save stuff when you're in these, this database? So let's open up an article. Hopefully it pops up a little quicker than that last go around. <clears throat> nope. <laughs> so I'll just be patient. Okay. There we go. We see our Negro boxers there, which is what we wanted. And this is the article. So um, this is the, the one that it's coming from. Let's say we want that article. What can we do? Well, um, you have some options here. Let's say we wanted to print it. We could click print and we can print the entire page or select a clip. Entire page, it means that entire newspaper page is going to be shrunk down to eight and a half by 11, which you won't be able to read. So that's probably not what you're going to want to do in this case. You probably want to do select clip, and then you can um, drag this box to exactly the article you want and nothing more, or maybe a little bit more, because sometimes these articles, the way they're um, laid out, you may get, like this case, a little bit of another article in there. But you see the idea, you can you can select the portion you want and then uh, print that clip. You can also just do clipping from the jump, um, which allows you to download. Um, so if you sit um, select clip, you do the same thing, you pick which content you want, and then you can download that into a nice PDF. Um, along the way, if you decide you want to cite this thing, how do you cite a newspaper from this database? They do have a handy dandy cite um, option here. And you have different things you can download it in if you have different kinds of uh, citation managers. But also if you just want to get the actual um, citation that you copy and paste, you choose what style you want to use. History often uses Chicago manual. You would go in there and it tells you up here, this is, you can copy and paste this and now this isn't 100% always correct. You want to, this is going to get you partial of the way there. You still want to make sure that this is correct by looking at, in this case, the Chicago Manual of Style or um, Purdue OWL and see how they're saying you cite uh, a newspaper article from a database to make sure it matches up because sometimes the database will leave out content that you need for whatever reason. Um, these are computer generated and they're not always 100% accurate, but it does get you 90% of the way. And then you just do the rest on your own to make sure that it's correct. Okay. All right. So that's basically the news big platform. In this case, um, um, Black Life in America. You know, like I said, you could use Hispanic Life in America. And when we get Asian uh, Life in America, they operate exactly the same way. You need to do the same things with the proximity searching, possibly the Boolean, because it's the same platform. It has the same limitations. So what I'm going to jump to now is I'm not gonna I'm gonna skip um, uh, black thought and culture. I'm gonna go back to it, but I want to show you the Los Angeles Sentinel. What's the Los Angeles Sentinel? Well, it tells you here is the historic coverage of this Los Angeles newspaper, which is a, a a newspaper owned and operated by and for the black community in Los Angeles. So it's our local um, Southern California kind of major black newspaper. So we went from a, a database here where we were searching thousands of databases and hundreds of African-American newspapers to just one title, Los Angeles Sentinel. So let's go ahead and click on that. So this database is on the ProQuest um, uh, platform and it is a major newspaper platform. So we have, uh, we have this, uh, Los Angeles Sentinel, we have, um, and it has all these pop-ups that I got to get rid of here. Um, and we have the Chicago Defender, which is a another African-American newspaper out of Chicago, but also our New York Times, our Los Angeles Times, and some of our major current newspaper content is also on this platform. So you'll see this look a lot when you're searching for newspapers. 
Um, but in this case, we're only searching the Los Angeles Sentinel. So some of our databases are just one newspaper. So you're like, why would I search this when I could have searched, you know, Black Life in America and have access to 400? Well, in this case, you're getting a very local context. If you want to know what um, the Black perspective in Los Angeles was on a particular topic between these years of 1934 to 2010, this is where you're going to get it. And it allows you to juxtapose it with, let's say, the Los Angeles Times. Two newspapers from the same community, the same city, they're going to have completely different coverage, completely different perspective. You have this sort of main mainstream culture um, uh, uh, idea from the Los Angeles Times, and then you have the Black community uh, idea from the Los Angeles Sentinel. So it's a really interesting way to, to look at a particular topic and see how each um, newspaper was looking at it. And of course, the Los Angeles Sentinel is going to go into more depth uh, uh, when it's concerning Black community stuff that the other paper wouldn't even touch. They would never publish it and you'll never see it. So um, that's why you might use um, a database like this that's very uh, singular. It's just one particular newspaper. All right. Having said all that, let's say you were looking up on something on Tom Bradley um, and his campaign. In 1973, became the major, the mayor of uh, Los Angeles, and um, I've got all these windows open. I can't even see the. There it is. <laughs> Oops, got to spell it right too. Um, Tom Bradley campaign. We go ahead and hit search. Because he ran for mayor for a lot of terms, he actually ran in 1969 and lost um, when he was a councilman. But then he he won in 73, and then every four years up until the 90s, he had campaigns. So there's a lot of material here for the campaigns, but we want his first winning campaign, which was in 1973. So we have uh, almost 1,400 results here, but we want to narrow down, just like we did in Black Life in America, to a particular um, time range. Time range. So let's go to the 70s. And you can see that's one of the largest one because there was a lot of coverage of his first um, winning campaign, plus his first and his second, um, would have been his second uh, campaign that he won as well in uh, 77. So let's go ahead and update that to the 70s. Now that we're in the 70s, we can actually narrow down even further. We can see this big old spike here. Well, that's 73. That's the winning year. So we can go down to that particular year too, so that we can just see 1973. And we have 158 results. That's a manageable result. And we can go through these articles and see what's going on. Now in this database, fortunately, we didn't have to do all those proximity searching and all that kind of stuff necessarily because it indexes at the article level. You're searching individual articles, not entire pages of newspapers. So when I go in here, you're only going to see that article, not all that other content from that page that would have been there. So even if it's broken across pages in the actual paper, you know how they sometimes say continue on page 32, um, it's all within this one file, so you don't have to worry about that. Okay, so it's, it's a little bit easier to use this database when you're searching. Okay, so that's an article um, that that may be a, be of use for this this idea of looking at um, Tom Bradley's first winning campaign from 1973. And even when you're in 1973, you can even break it down into months. I'm not going to go that far, but you can here. So as you drill down into the dates, you go from decades to years to months. But I'm just going to leave it here at all the years of 73. So in this database, um, you can also do stuff. Like I said, this is the Black community um, database. Now, if I'm going into the Los Angeles Times and look at his campaign, you're going to find articles. It's going to be a very different perspective, how they're looking at Tom Bradley, a person from the community, the Black community, you know, doing this uh, historic thing. It's going to be a very different perspective than how the Los Angeles Times was looking at it, although they understood it was a historical um, campaign as well, but it's just going to be the flavor is going to be very different. So um, let's say we, okay, great. I've found his campaign, but I want to know a little bit more about Tom Bradley before he was mayor. How can you do that? Well, we can take out the campaign part and we could take off the dates. And let's say we want to look at, um, whoops, no, came back in and we take that off again. And let's say, okay, let's run this search with Tom Bradley, just Tom Bradley, no campaign. We almost have 10,000 results. And a lot of that's going to be in the stuff while he was mayor. So we want to get before he was mayor. So we're down here now into the 60s. So let's go from the 40s to the 60s. So this is pre-being mayor. It's like, who was Tom Bradley? What did he do? There's almost 900 articles that mention him. 
So you have something here about one of his aides being murdered, unfortunately. Um, you have stuff um, talking about probably his um, the, the 1969 um, failed mayor campaign. That's what most of these are coming from 69. So let's say we don't really want to deal with 69 either because, you know, um, we wanted to focus on when he was like, let's say in the 50s even. We can go down here and update it even further. So now we're only dealing with the 1940s and 50s. And now you're seeing, oh, he was a police officer. He was promoted to lieutenant. Okay. Oh, he was a sergeant at one time. So he was obviously worked his way through the uh, LAPD. And, oh, he's made some arrests and some big cases and, and these kind of things. So you're finding out more information about this person um, that you're probably you're never going to find in the Los Angeles Times. They're not going to talk about the promotion of Tom Bradley to to sergeant or to lieutenant. It just wasn't going to be big enough news for the L.A. Times. But for the black community, these are big things. These are these are black officers moving up the ranks in a in a largely white police force. This is meaningful stuff. So they actually are covering it in the LA Sentinel. And then you find stuff like this where it's like some socialite stuff. You find that, you know, he's, you know, in, in you know, doing these things um, that are outside of police work, that he's part of the community, that he's part of these, these other groups inside the community. So you can write up almost a little biography of information about Tom Bradley just by going to these sources. Um, so that's the kind of thing you're going to find in a Los Angeles Sentinel that you're not going to find in the LA Times, or probably even in the um, Black Life in America, because this is very specific to LA. Okay, so the same idea, if I wanted to save this, I could download it here, I could print it here. In this case, I don't have to map out exactly what I want because it's already you know, dedicated to that one particular um, article, and it actually gives you the information about the article too when you print or download, um, so that's handy. It doesn't give you the citation style, which you would want to find up here. And there's another area where you can also download up here. But if we click on cite, we'll actually get how to, how to cite it in whatever format, just like in the other one. Um, we can choose Chicago and get that format there and copy and paste. Once again, you're always going to want to check these against the Chicago manual style to make sure everything's correct. Like you can see some capitalization issues that might be here. There shouldn't be all caps in any citation style but it's just pulling data from the computer and that's how the computer had it. So that's how it ends up being um, cited. So some things you will have to correct. Okay, so that's the Los Angeles Sentinel. So why you might go to that particular uh, database. I'm gonna go back up to Black Thought and um, um, Culture, which we skipped because I wanted to show you a, a, a big newspaper article uh, database to one specific newspaper article database, just to have them um, juxtaposed. Um, Black Thought and Culture. This is a totally different database than anything we've looked at so far, because this has a lot of other content in it. It's got some newspapers, but it's got a lot of other stuff in it. And it's telling you here is about 100,000 um, pages of nonfiction writings, which means it's going to be, you know, you know, it's going to be, you know, could be speeches. It could be all kinds of content that's not um, fiction. So when you're in uh, Black Thought and Culture, um, there's other platforms of things like Latinx Thought and Culture, North American Indian Thought and Culture. And so once again, if you can use this database um, uh, uh, front screen, you can use the others. And once again, I have all these other little pop-ups that I have to accept. So just like the other databases, you know, you could just go start searching um, to see what's, what's available. But you might want to look at some of these things here. Just like on the first database, they had the breakdowns where we looked at segregated churches. Well, you have that kind of thing here, too, where they have these canned subjects that you can look at. So here's some things that you, if you're looking for a topic, you're not sure what you want to do, you can go here under historical events, see if you can find something. They have it under subjects, which is slightly going to be broader than, than historical events, right? Um, you can look there. Or um, you can look at, oops, I jumped way too far. Um content types. So we, remember the first two databases we saw are newspaper databases. We want to see what kind of contents in these databases we can look under content types. And now we're seeing, oh, they have chapters of books, they have advertisements in here, they have letters, oral histories, um, speeches, testimonies. There's a lot of content in here that we wouldn't have found in those other databases. Once again, the Netflix versus Hulu idea. Netflix has a lot of stuff. Hulu has a lot of stuff. They're not always the same. 
And in this case, they have a lot of content that has nothing to do with newspapers. So we may be interested in speeches. And so this is where we might want to go. So let's look at speeches. There's 68 of them. And we can see that there's stuff by um, W.E.B. Du Bois, um, Bayard Rustin, who just had a movie made about him in Netflix, got Malcolm X, Paul Robeson, so all these major figures um, from black history and, and, so, and civil rights are listed in here across the whole 20th century in this case. Um, so that's one way to drill down into uh, uh, you know, content that you may be interested in that that's not newspaper content might be something else. And you just click on it and it usually, this isn't gonna be media, even though it says it has a little microphone there, it's transcripts. These are transcripts of interviews and speeches, right? It's not uh, um, uh, a recording, even though it looks like it might be. Um, but we can also go back to the front screen and um, let me get back there. What do I gotta do, click here, no. You go start all over because I don't want to waste your time. Go back to the front screen and um, do a search. So let's say you were looking for something on the artist Vivian Brown. You can do put her name in. Go ahead and do a search. And we're seeing right up here something written by um, Vivian Brown um, in something called Artist and Influence Volume 4. Um, we can go ahead and click on that and see what we got going here. And so it turns out it's an interview of her by a woman named Emma Amos. And we can go ahead and click on that. And once again, it's a transcript. It's not a recording, a video or a um, audio recording. You can see this is a transcript of the interview. So I've got some information about this artist I was interested in. So that's kind of how you would use this database. Um, and just like with all the other databases, you can email results, um, you can print results, you can, you can cite the results here. So that you're starting to see that all of these kind of work similarly, right? They look differently. It's like going from Target to Walmart.com. Um, there are two places where you can shop, but they have different like shopping carts and how you save and how the stuff is listed. It looks different because they're two different companies. Well, the same idea here. They, the look and feel of some of these databases and collections are different, but the functionality is generally the same. So you just kind of look around the screen. So in this case, oh yeah, we want Chicago again. Um, and, and you can do it like that. So you just kind of look around the screen for the obvious things, the citation, the printing, the downloading, because um, they look slightly different in each database, just like if you're going out to different websites, they look different. The same thing because ours are different companies. They have different ideologies on why they do what they do and different developers making these things. They look different. Okay. All right. So that's the Alexander Street platform. So we've talked about ProQuest. We've talked about NewsBank. We've talked about Alexander Street. And they also have a bunch of sister databases where you can, you know, for other ethnic groups. So if you can use one, once again, you can use another. There's some content here I'm not going to touch. There's a lot of stuff here. We've recently purchased a ton and ton of content and we don't have time to go over them all, but I do wanna go over another one um, that's sort of outside of African-American um, uh, uh, history, but it's, but it's still black history. And this is this archives of Latin American and Caribbean history. It's a, it's a combination obviously of, 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 of Lat, uh, Latino and, 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 um, and, and black uh, uh, primary resources. So this is the Gale interface, right? It's another platform once again, and we have quite a bit of content under Gale. So we have the indigenous peoples of North America, our women's studies archive and our archives of sexuality and gender are all under the Gale platform, right? And just like our other um, databases, once again, they're all generally similar, although they look different. We could just go searching right away but if we weren't sure what we wanted to look for, we could go over here to look at some specific collections of stuff, um, particular kinds of publications. So why are we using this database? Because this covers the Caribbean islands that are um, black nations like Jamaica and um, Trinidad, these kinds of places, but also the black communities of Brazil, Colombia, wherever black people might be, they could come up in this database within Latin America or the Caribbean. So this is it, it's it's useful if you're doing a broader look 
at Black history and what some primary resources, but it also works great also, of course, for Latin American history. So if I go under collections here, you'll see that most of this stuff is just generally, um, you know, Latin American history. But if you go down, you will see some things that deal with, with, um, with Black history too. Like in, in this case, these are records of the Department of State dealing with Haiti. So what's of course is a Black nation. Here's another one here. Um, and they're giving different time periods. So this is an earlier one because America has some different dealings with Haiti and various invasions over time and, and various other issues. So you have two different collections here that are dealing with Haiti. Uh, we can click on those um, and you can, um, you know, just kind of either look at all the documents, clicking here, you can see kind of just, they're just all laid out and you can kind of start going through them. And you can see over here that these are like, uh, uh, you know, government uh, dispatches and things put brought out by the embassies and all those various things that the State Department puts out. Um, so that's a relevant, uh, a relevant thing. These are some of these are monographs, which means they're books. Whenever you see that term monograph, that generally means book. Um, so that's an interesting way of getting to content, once again, by kind of looking at these grouped preformed categories that the database makers decided. But once again, we can also search. So let's say we are looking at the concept of maroons. What are maroons? Maroons are um, uh, people who were enslaved, who escaped and created their own communities. These maroon communities, they were dotted out throughout Latin America and the, and the Caribbean. They'd be in like, they would run, they would form groups and run off into more isolated areas where they could be left alone. They were more defensible. They had resources. But they weren't. They were, you know, they were. They were creating their own societies, and they called them maroon societies or maroon communities. So you can see a lot of it was occurring in, you know, Jamaica had several maroon communities, um, in the West Indies in general. So when you go to one of these, uh, these are monographs, eighty-seven monographs. These are books, but there's also newspapers. Um, but if you click on one, in this case, it's a book, it tells you what page your term appears on. So I don't have to read this whole book to figure out where is Maroon being discussed in this history. So you could go to page five and it will show you, oh, that's where Maroon is. You go to page 49 and oh, that's where Maroons are. So you can, you can go through these very quickly to see how my term is being used and in what context and read the pages that are most useful for you to be using for your um, research. Now, because this is a book from 1803, it's a primary resource because it's from the time period talking about maroon communities of the time period. So um, it's not a secondary source um, for us. It's a primary source for us because it's somebody's account of these communities that they've either studied or come in contact with um, the members of, okay? So once again, just like any of the other databases, um, there are ways to save this content, uh, this content um, so you just kind of have to look around. Well, where is it? Oh, it's up here this time. Well, I could print it and it tells me what pages do you want to do? You can do the whole thing, put it all the way to the end, or I know I only want pages 29 through 42. Or you can, um, you can download, and once again, you can download a PDF the entire thing, um, even with OCR, um, a PDF with OCR, or you could um, just pick a, a, a selection of pages that you want so you don't end up having this gigantic file if you don't want it. So all the databases, once again, are pretty similar. Once again, here's a site um, function. Go to site, here we go. We can go to Chicago um, and select, oops, no, I click Chicago, there we go. Um, and yeah, it changed. Uh, so there's Chicago and I could select it and copy and paste it once again, always check. <laughs> to make sure that it's correct Chicago style. All the elements are there, so you get, it gets you a long way towards it, but you still want to make sure it's 100% correct. And you can also download it into the, export it into these uh, citation managers as well. So um, those were the four platforms I wanted to show you. And like I said, it's really cool because you can use the, 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 the knowledge you gain using one to go to another ethnic group or even sometimes other databases within the same ethnic group and be able to navigate them effectively because you have mastered one or another. Um, if there's, are, is there any questions? You can either unmute or um, put it in the chat. I do wanna show you real quickly how you get help in the library. So I'm gonna go back to the library homepage. Um, 
and go to this where it says Ask a Librarian. This is where you're going to get your help. If you go to Ask a Librarian, you have several options. You can chat with a librarian through here if this, if this box is open. Um, you also have uh, options of emailing or texting. These are going to be usually be, you know, just quick questions, not full research questions generally. Um, we also have a 24 hour chat. So we offer, we offer service between like 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. You know, during the week. Um, and there's some other hours uh, on Friday and Saturday. But if you need help after hours, there's 24 seven access to a real live librarian. They're just not CSU librarians. I know you can't see this right now because the pop-up menu, I just realized that um, you can't see what I'm saying, pointing at, but um, just note that those options are there. Chat, 24 seven chat, email and text. Um, but the, the, the real cool one is the research appointments. So if you really want to lay out your question and have 30 minutes with a librarian, you can go under um, make a research appointment. You can either do it by Zoom or you can do it in person. Um, it's your choice, whatever's convenient for you. If you leave it at no preference, um, you get a lot more options of times. Um, if you pick something like myself in particular, and then this, you do the same day, um, you're going to get fewer for options only available for two hour or uh, two different time slots that day. So if you if you don't have a preference, it's great to leave it at no preference because it gives you a lot more flexibility and times. But if you want to make an appointment with me or anybody else, um, you can choose them and then you know navigate whatever calendar they have available. So um, that's what I wanted to show you all today. I know some of you might be needing to uh, or came today for extra credit. If you do need extra credit, I'm going to copy and paste this URL into um, the chat. Sometimes when you click on it, it doesn't work, but you can copy and paste it into your browser and fill out that form. And then I will send you a confirmation um, or your professor a confirmation that you came today. So if you if you need that, feel free to use it. If you don't, that's great. Are there any questions before we break for the day? Hearing none, I thank you all for coming. Um, I did record Brent. this video, so I will load it up to the um, to the library uh, YouTube channel um, when I get a chance. So if you can refer to it later or um, pass it on to a friend if they they need this information, um, feel free. I will. Uh, it'll be up there probably within a week or so. Um, but uh, if you have any questions after this is done, feel free to reach out to me. Send me an email make a, a appointment, whatever you want to do, and uh, we'll be good to go. Well, thanks again for coming, and uh, good luck with your research.